Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my Storing Duplicate Data series. If you haven't watched part one yet, well, go watch part one and then come on back. Okay, so in part one, we talked about why it's important to be able to have the address here for the customer and also have a separate address here. So when you put new orders in, you know what the address was at the time of the order. Now, this involves making sure, if you go to a new record here, that this guy is open, right? If you're the kind of person that likes to just open up the order form and go to a new record and put in an order, you got all these pound name errors here, okay? So, let's talk about this first, and then we'll talk about the other thing, how we can just pick a customer and have all that data fill in, all right? The problem here is that if you have a default value pointing to a form that's not open, access is like, bruh, I got no idea. I can't figure out what you're talking about because this form isn't open. So we're not going to set the default value here in the forms design time properties. But what we can do is we can have the button that opens this form say, hey, your default value is this other field on this other form. Okay, let me show you an example. First, let's get rid of these default values. Now, so you don't have to do all of them at the same time, watch this trick. Highlight them all. Now they're all different, right? So you can't select them all and delete them, but watch this, you could put a number one in there. Hit tab. Now you just set those all to one. And now you can delete that one which deletes all those values. So individually, they're all deleted now. See that? If they're different, they won't show up here unless they're exactly the same thing, right? But you can change them all to the same thing and then delete that same thing. That's a cool little trick. That alone is worth the price of admission, folks. All right, save this now. We normally open the order form from the customer form, right? Here it is, we move back over here. Okay, and if I go to a blank new record, I want the default values to appear from here. Okay, we can set those in this button. Now there's a couple caveats though, watch this. If I go into the button, okay, here's the button code that actually opens up that form. Now we could set those values here, but there's a problem, watch what happens. If I say forms order F address equals address, which is the address on the form that you're on, right? The customer form, okay, if I save that, and then close this, right? Close it, close it, close it. Let's open it back up again. If I go to orders now, all right, it's gonna, well, first of all, it didn't go to a new order. It, it just changed the order on this one. So let's, let's, let's address that too while we're at it. Let's go back to our code. Let's say we wanna open up that, that, let's pretend that button's gonna open up and go to a new record, right? So here, we're gonna say comma, comma, AC form add. Instead of opening up the orders for that customer, we're gonna add a new order, okay? And then we're gonna set the address. So save it, close it. All right, ready? Click the button. And it appears to have worked just fine, but notice what happens here. This record is now dirty, right? What does that mean? Well, that means we're actually adding a new record, which is kind of what you want to do but if at this point you decide you don't wanna add that order, now you just added a blank order for the customer. And if you go into the order table, you'll see there's another blank order down here for that customer. And every time your user clicks that button, they're gonna add another order. And then they're gonna add another order. And you, you wanna try to avoid that, right? Because then you get all these extra blank orders in the system, here they all are. So we don't wanna actually set the value of address from this button that opens the form. But what we can do is we can set that default value property to address, okay? So it's gonna be forms order F address dot default value. Okay, we're still not done yet though. Watch what happens now. Save this, close it, close it, open it, click, and we get back to pound name again. Why am I back to pound name? Well, because this form has no idea what you're talking about. What is address? I know that I'm an address, but I have no value, okay? 
So the trick here is you have to call that, whoops, I opened up the wrong thing. <laughs> the trick is you have to call it by what it thinks that other field is. You have to put in here exactly what that string was before for the default value. And it looks like this, quote, equals forms customer F address, just like that. So now when the order form opens up, it's going to set the address field's default value equal to what we had before. Make sense? And now you'll do this with all of the fields, right? Address, city, state, zip, country, right? We got city, we got state, we got zip, we got country. And then we just copy and paste, right? Copy, paste. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Okay, so this will open up the form and set the default value properties, but it won't change the record that's currently open. Okay, click the button. Look at that. All my defaults are in place. I can close this. I can go to a different customer. I can click on this one. And look at that. All the defaults are still in place because this button controls that. Now, if I open up the order form from somewhere else and go to a new record, I'm not getting pound name errors because the basic default value property is not trying to look for a form that's not open. See how that works? It's a neat little trick, but once you know it, it's really cool. All right, so now we should probably change this button here too. Let's, let's, let's redesign this button. This is gonna be my, my add and order button, okay? And then we'll, do, uh, we'll slide this one down. And we'll make another button to replace the one that we just destroyed. <laughs> Copy, paste, you know, view orders. We'll make this one view orders. All right, like that. And then this guy can have its name as uh, view orders button. And then right click build event. And then we'll put this back into what it should have been before, <laughs> which was do command open form order F comma, comma, comma. Uh, customer ID equals the customer ID on this guy. That's what I did in the invoicing and the blank template, right? So the so the add order, this one here, we'll put a little comment in here, add new order. Okay, open the form and set the default value properties to what that form sees as the default value, which is the other form. Okay, now, now that I've done this, let's talk about the other thing we were gonna do, which was, for people who like to open up, they don't want to go through the customer form. I've had clients like this before too. They want to sit down, they got a stack of paper invoices or whatever for the day. They want to open up the order form from here and just go to town. So we'll put a button on the main menu, copy paste, right? To add an order, add new order, give it a name. We don't want Alex yelling at us, right? Add order. Button. Can you have an add order button on the main menu and on the customer form? Absolutely. As long as it's on a different form, that's fine. Okay, right click build event. Whoop. Oh, look what happened. It went into the macro editor. Why? Because when I built this main menu form, some of these buttons I did for beginner students. Remember that? And I used the, uh, the command button wizard to create these. So we're going to have to go in here, go to events. This is fine. Delete the embedded macro that's in there. Just hit delete. I like to tab off it, come back to it, and then hit the dot, dot, dot button, and that'll put us back in the command and the in the code builder. All right, so again, this is just gonna be do command dot open form, order F, comma, 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 AC form add. We're just gonna add a new order. All right, ready? So back to the main menu. I'm gonna hit the add new order button, and now I'm ready to enter a new order, okay. So what I want to happen at this point is we're going to drop this down, pick a customer. Now notice at this point, the order's added and I want it to fill in his address. And I ran a little long today explaining that other stuff with the pound name error. So we'll cover this in tomorrow's video. Do you know the drill? Tune in tomorrow, same bad time, blah, 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 blah. No, seriously, we'll cover it tomorrow. Members, you can watch it right now. But that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. Hope you learned some. There's some cool tricks in today's video. I wasn't planning on going into that much depth with this stuff. But once I started going into it, I'm like, we got to talk about it. It's really cool stuff. So I hope you learned something. 
Live long and prosper. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.